Have you ever wondered why some people feel unhappy despite having everything, while others with a lot less give off happiness and satisfaction? This isn't just a coincidence. It is heavily influenced by our understanding or lack thereof. We're going to look into the past to understand what truly makes people happy and brings them together today. The Secrets of Stoicism, a theory still useful today, teach us not just to survive, but to thrive in today's chaotic world is crucial. If you're unsure, I encourage you to remain with us until the conclusion. Rather than just talking, this video challenges your worldview. And your part in it, we look at why having a calm attitude is a good idea. It's not just about persevering. It's about transforming every challenge into a positive experience. This is a way to grow as a person. For those who are new here, if you have been with us but haven't joined yet, this is your invitation. Join a group that fosters personal growth and intellectual understanding. Click the subscribe button like this video and feel free to share it with other people. Who could use a fresh look at life? Are you ready to question what you think you know and adopt the silent way? Allow us to begin. Why do some guys succeed in relationships while others struggle, despite seemingly possessing similar qualities? It goes deeper and reaches the core of things. It's not just about looks or money. Of ancient knowledge and human psychology, have you ever noticed how some people seem to find and maintain good relationships easily? These men often possess an unwavering sense of calm and confidence that automatically makes people want to be around them. They adhere to a set of principles that mold them in this manner, so it's not a coincidence. That might not make sense at first, but they are very successful. They have qualities. Stoic thinkers praise traits like self-control, purpose and wisdom. Studying Stoicism teaches you to control what you can, Relationships are a wonderful place to learn what is and isn't okay. For this reason, high-value guys tend to perform well in relationships. They excel at concentrating on their actions and emotions rather than attempting to exert control over others. The other person in the relationship feels natural trust and attraction as a result. This is quite appealing. These individuals understand the pursuit of a fulfilling life. Stoic thought says that happiness means developing virtues and getting along with nature. This encompasses their identity, their perspective on human connections, and their approach to relationships. Not as competitions or games to win, but as chances to do something. To connect deeply in order to provide worth and also to grow as a person is crucial. The Stoic concept of self-care is highly valued by high-value individuals. Deal with their relationships in a way that doesn't depend on them to determine their worth or happiness. This gives them a sense of wholeness, which paradoxically enhances their beauty. They're like a strong tree in the middle of a field, not needy or clingy, just strong. Offering safety and beauty to those who come close Keep in mind that the traits of relationships are not solely influenced by external factors. They are deeply rooted in their philosophical view of life. It's about being calm. Stoicism offers a logical and meaningful way to live your life. This doesn't just make sense. Not only do they make better partners, but they also make people happier and stronger overall. It might sound a little strange to think that avoiding someone could make you more attractive. There is a deeper psychological reason for this idea, which makes it seem silly or even harmful, that a lot of people miss. And it's one that high-value guys have used subtly, knowing since the Middle Ages has been more important than being rude or dismissive. The power of apathy and selective attention can significantly alter how others perceive you. This is also not a new idea. The ideals of Stoicism stress how important it is. We choose what to look at and how that influences our connections and actions. With the rise of social media, people are constantly seeking attention these days. 
individuals have become accustomed to constant alerts and distractions. Obtaining consistent approval is nearly a given. However, when someone violates this rule by responding immediately or receiving excessive attention, it breaks the routine and all of a sudden that person is different. Interesting. This is where the power of apathy enters the picture, giving the impression that there are insufficient resources. That makes you stand out because you're not giving someone attention all the time. Avoiding the trap of neediness demonstrates to others your value for yourself, making you look like you need their approval for your happiness. On the other hand, as long as you demonstrate that your happiness and sense of self are independent, getting approval from someone else makes you feel positive about your own self-assurance and security. It's very beautiful. It's the difference between wanting and needing attention. It's about having the strength to accept it when it comes your way. Your sense of self is strong enough that other people's approval won't change how you feel inside. It's important to make it clear that indifference doesn't mean ignoring someone or being mean to them. There's no point in playing mind games or trying to hurt someone's feelings on purpose. Instead, it's about being aware of when you're putting too much pressure on yourself. When you're overly focused on winning someone over, it's important to return to a place where you feel safe. This is a place where you feel calm and centered and where your actions are driven by a purpose instead of the need for approval. In addition, when you take this method, you're actually doing both. Do yourself and the other person a favor by not putting too much feeling into things too soon. You allow the relationship to grow and make room for the other person. It's crucial that they work together to demonstrate their interest and reach a compromise. It's similar to the stoic way of life when it comes to making healthy, long-lasting relationships. Maintaining perspective and avoiding excessive attachment to unchangeable aspects is crucial. This doesn't mean you should never show love or pay attention. Giving attention to specific individuals amplifies its power and importance. Giving your attention to others all the time devalues it. People expect it instead of being grateful for it. But if you know when to give, knowing when to stop paying attention is a rare and important skill. That other people look for the power of apathy isn't about separating yourself. It's about choosing what to focus on and doing it on purpose. It's about separating completely from other people. Setting your own growth, happiness and well-being before others' approval is key. A core value is the idea of being brave in life and relationships. Not only are there modern dating tips, but there are also traditional ones. Stoicism says bravery means acting as well as not being afraid. Whatever your fears may be, it's important to understand that interactions are lifelike. We need courage and self-confidence to do important things. Stoic thinkers like Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus talked a lot about how important we learn by facing problems with bravery and venturing into the unknown. We truly grow and discover our full potential, stepping forward with confidence. It doesn't mean blindly jumping in. It means understanding that hesitancy and inaction are detrimental. When it comes to relationships, high-value guys know that being safe can be worse than taking risks. If you're constantly waiting, taking action is the first thing that will attract others to you. For the best time, the best words, or the best set of circumstances, doing nothing could trap you in a loop. People who are successful at relationships aren't always the most attractive, rich, or charming. Often, they are the ones who are willing to take risks, initiate action, and grasp the opportunity. When these situations arise, consider these factors before taking the courageous step to engage in conversation. By being sure of yourself, you're not only showing that you're brave, you're also expressing that having a certain amount of self-respect means you care about yourself enough to go after what you want. Without asking anyone for permission, this is what the Stoics taught. 
It's important to let go of things you can't change about your actions and control the things you can. You can't be certain that the other person will reciprocate your feelings based on factors such as their reaction. You can take the first step and describe yourself if you're really interested. Someone who isn't afraid to take the lead also attracts me. It shows power, assertiveness and confidence, which are traits that everyone has. Approaching someone directly sends a message that you find them attractive and respect them. The idea that you are someone who goes after what they want in life extends beyond relationships and impacts other aspects of life, such as work. When you think of personal growth and bonds, you might think of Alexander the Great. In Stoic beliefs, he was praised not only for his military victories, but also for his bravery. He was doing brave things that would change the direction of history, but he wasn't acting without thinking. It took planning and guts to show that you were ready to leave your comfort zone. Being bold and pursuing something bigger requires vulnerability. When you leave your comfort zone, you grow. It's simple to stay in your comfort zone. There is always a chance that someone will say no when you approach them, but as the Stoic said, it doesn't matter what happens to you as long as you deal with loss in a healthy way. If you define yourself by pursuing it with confidence and acknowledging the possibility of rejection, with practice, you'll believe in your worth and become stronger. It doesn't depend on the opinions of others. This represents a significant shift in your perspective, one that helps you stay stable and sure of yourself no matter what happens. And there is a greater psychological benefit to being brave when you take the lead. Instead of sitting back and responding, you set the tone for the conversation. You set the tone for the relationship by what the other person does. This doesn't mean you're not being a leader by taking blame. You're controlling the other person. High-value guys appreciate your efforts and initiative. Taking the initiative like this demonstrates that they are comfortable being in charge, which is a positive quality. Being brave doesn't just work in relationships. It works in many other areas of life, too. Choosing the first method or maintaining interaction and engagement is crucial. Being clear about your goals and communicating your feelings is key. A lot of people are afraid to show interest because they don't want to seem needy or too strong. But the truth is that a strong and clear statement of interest can be much more appealing. Instead of playing it safe, the Stoics really respected being honest about how you feel. It's important to follow your own path without allowing fear or the opinions of others to hinder you. For example, Marcus Aurelius thought that people should plan their actions. I often write in my musings about the importance of having a purpose for everything you do and think. He knew our focus changes our reality and we become what we focus on. When you use focused attention, you're not just picking and choosing what to pay attention to, you're consciously choosing. What drives you in relationships is what you focus on. You must earn it and express gratitude. You're not ignoring people to get what you want. You're choosing your focus. You should strive toward things that help you grow, make you happy and give you value. When you give someone your undivided attention too quickly, especially in the early stages of a relationship, this can appear desperate or needy to others. You have nothing else going on, and you want their praise to feel like your life is complete. Being rude in this way can quickly make your attention seem less important, because that's how people naturally act. Don't value things that are easy to get and plentiful. It's in our nature to value items that are hard to find or take some work to get. That's why controlled attention works. Focusing your attention on the right things can be a powerful way to draw them. It makes you seem mysterious and difficult, which in turn makes people want to be around you more. Being cold or detached doesn't mean you should pay attention, but paying attention doesn't mean ignoring. Instead of focusing on the people you care about, consider mentally cutting yourself off. 
It means being aware of how much and when you give care. It involves striking a balance where people value your presence. It's not a given that this fits with the Stoic idea of temperance. Just as you wouldn't overeat or drink, you should balance everything. You shouldn't give away too much of your attention. Moderation is key. When you choose to pay attention to someone, it matters, and your presence is important. Realizing that it's not just about other people is another part of managed attention. Also, how you handle your own mind is important. A lot of people don't know how often they let their, when they allow minor issues to dominate their focus, they become engrossed in drama. They don't have time for gossip or endless reading on social media, as both activities deplete their energy levels. They don't significantly contribute to the relationship. High-value guys know this and choose to focus on other women, toward things that help them grow, like a deep connection with someone. This focused attention on personal interests or self-improvement, in addition to enhancing their beauty and happiness, another important stoic tool for setting limits is controlled attention. Boundaries serve to protect your most valuable possessions, not to keep others out. Being clear about who or what needs your attention is a form of setting limits. My time and energy are important to me, and I won't give them away for free. This kind of self-respect is like an attraction. It draws people to you. Affectionate people and those who want your time or feelings will turn you off. Remember that focused attention isn't about making space for nothing. Being aware of your thoughts and choosing to focus on them is a form of money, and like any important money, it shouldn't be spent without thinking. Men worth your time know this and value your time. They don't waste it on pointless things or people who don't care about it. Instead, they put it to beneficial use, where it will help them reach their goals and follow their interests the most. With the people who really matter, a fearless attitude goes beyond simply projecting confidence. It involves cultivating a profound sense of self-assurance. Have a deep trust in your own worth, regardless of what others may think of you. Epictetus, a Stoic scholar, asserted that our self-perception should not be influenced by outside events or views. If you want to get better, be happy with what you think. He urged people to abandon their constant need for approval, labeling it as foolish and stupid. This way of thinking gives you a calm, solid confidence that makes people want to be around you. Since it's real and not fake, it's not about getting approval from other people, but about being sure of who you are. Having a bold mindset means facing the challenges life presents with determination, this doesn't mean that you won't have failures or sometimes feel uncertain, which means that you won't let those feelings get the best of you. Take charge of your deeds. Marcus Aurelius wrote extensively about maintaining a steady mind. When things went wrong, he told himself in his meditations that problems would always be there. But they are also chances to show how strong you are and work on traits like self-discipline and courage. When you face your fears head-on, you not only get over them, you also prove to yourself that you can do it, that you can handle the problems that come up in life, and this makes you unshakable. This bold way of thinking is very attractive when it comes to relationships. It demonstrates that you view yourself as a valuable individual, not as someone in need of love and attention. Speaking calmly and confidently to others creates a different tone. Instead of coming across as needy or overly eager, you have your own hobbies and goals in life that bring you happiness. The stoic concept of self-care applies outside of the relationship. Your happiness and sense of meaning don't depend on anyone else. You're whole on your own, and the friendship is just making things better. Being fearless in the face of rejection is another aspect of adopting a bold attitude. Failure in a relationship is often the thing that people fear the most. However, Stoics believed that things were simply the way they were. 
They taught that the only thing that really mattered was what you did. What we can change is how we react to things, not the things themselves. Therefore, it's important to put yourself out there, whether it's to ask someone out or simply express your feelings. Stoics say that you should act based on what you value, like standing up for your wants. Don't let the fear of a negative response deter you if you receive a rejection. You accept it and view it as an opportunity to learn, not as a reflection of your value. We often overlook another aspect of the fearless approach, its vulnerability. Being brave doesn't mean you can't be hurt, it just means you're ready for anything. Stoics emphasized accepting truth and knowing you can overcome it. Epictetus said, Practice acceptance. Do not try to make things happen the way you want them to. Instead, express your desire for the events to not occur. If everything unfolds as it should, you will find happiness upon acceptance. With this method, you're not holding on to certain results in relationships. You're ready for anything that comes your way, and you believe you can handle it. If you want to be fearless, let go of negative things. This means letting go of attachments to outside approval of results. Stoics taught that holding on to things or people that aren't healthy anymore is not a beneficial thing. Having things happen that we can't change leads to pain, as Seneca said. In relationships, this means that your happiness doesn't rest on whether someone stays with you. No matter what's going on in your life, you value your time, peace and health enough to leave when you need to and know that your worth doesn't go down because of a situation. One of the most important things didn't go as planned. Stoic thought is based on the idea that we should keep our moral character. In any setting, it's simple to get into small fights or lash out. When someone treats us badly, the Stoics would argue that we are allowing their actions to control us. Marcus Aurelius said in his famous writings that the best way to get back at someone is to not be like them. That is, reacting to bad behavior with more bad behavior doesn't help you or anyone else. Putting yourself down brings you down. We are called to ascend above. We should never alter our beliefs, regardless of the actions of others. Being stoic and honest in the face of unacceptable behavior doesn't mean being a doormat or idly accepting disrespect. Instead, it's about being strong and keeping your feelings in check while setting clear limits. It's totally okay to let someone know that their behavior is unacceptable when they treat you badly. The important thing is to stay cool and not let your feelings affect how you act. For instance, you could say, I don't like being talked to that way. This conduct is impolite, and I would appreciate the opportunity to discuss it at our earliest convenience. Putting it more gently, this kind of answer keeps your self-respect while still getting the point across. The issue is that setting clear boundaries is a crucial aspect of managing negative behavior. It fits in well with the stoic idea of knowing what you can control. You can't change the way other people act, but you can change how you interact with them. You are not trying to change someone by setting limits. You are simply stating your expectations. Figure out how you want to be treated and what you will do if that doesn't happen. This method not only keeps you calm, but it also sends a message to others. You are an individual who values their own well-being and refuses to tolerate mistreatment. In Stoic practice, there is a component of silence that can be very helpful when dealing with bad behavior. The Stoics often talked about how important it was to keep quiet, to stay calm. Avoid unnecessary conflicts when someone tries to provoke you. A moment of silence can help you calm down, giving you time to think and making sure. This ensures you don't say something hastily that you might not need to later. Silence can also mean that you don't want to get involved in small fights or negative conversations. It's a way of saying without words that you're not interested in small things and won't waste your time on them.
practicing kindness and understanding is another stoic way to deal with unacceptable behavior. The goal is not to justify the actions, but to maintain harmony. When someone acts out, it's usually because they are having problems, are insecure, or are angry. Epictetus said that we should never judge others but always try to understand them. Is fighting on their own by choosing to see bad behavior in this way. It's important to calm down and not take their actions personally. You can respond from a place of wisdom and compassion after this change in viewpoint. Stockiness also emphasizes the importance of avoiding anger or resentment. How important is it to focus on your own good qualities, regardless of how others act? Seneca said that following your values is more important than trying to get support from other people or approval. When bad behavior happens, it's a chance to learn how to be patient. The Stoics put a lot of value on humility and self-control. You can use it to strengthen yourself instead of hurting your ego. This way of thinking not only helps you stay calm when things get tough, but it also makes you more creative. People will naturally admire your inner strength. To live with a strong sense of meaning, you need more than just goals. You need to know where you're going. This aligns with your deeply held beliefs and your needs in the realm of Stoicism. People who follow the Stoics think that true fulfillment comes from living with a purpose. Doesn't come from seeking short-term pleasures or benefits from outside sources, but from seeking a life. It is based on ethics, reason and purpose. It's about doing what matters. A strong sense of purpose helps you decide what is most important, not just what is easy or comfortable. Your time and energy. It's easier to work towards something you know you want. It's important to say no to things that don't matter and yes to things that do. The Stoics valued this type of attention, emphasizing the importance of discipline and the discipline to stay on track even when instant satisfaction tempts you. Seneca, for instance, told people not to be slaves to pleasure, and instead, the pursuit of goals will bring you long-lasting happiness when you have a reason for living. Giving in to every whim or outside pressure is difficult for you because you have a deeper foundation. This gives you the strength to give up things that others might not want. Additionally, having a goal gives you more strength when you have something driving you. When you know that mistakes and failures are temporary, you're more likely to keep going even when things go wrong. Are only a small part of Epictetus's story. He was a Stoic philosopher who started out as a slave. Teach us that our real power comes from how we handle life's challenges. His belief was that we can change our purpose even if we can't change our circumstances, as well as the meaning we give our events when we live with purpose. Setbacks are chances to see how determined you are to improve yourself. And to get stronger, they're not trouble, but steps that help you get there. Toward your ultimate goal. Living with a purpose also brings clarity to your life. In your relationships, it becomes easier to discern the nature of the individuals involved. You want to be around, and what kinds of relationships should you put time and effort into? When you have important goals in life, you naturally want to help other people. Who has morals like yours or can help you on your journey? The Stoics said to hang out with people who make you feel positive and who share your desire to be positive. Seneca wrote that you should surround yourself with people who will enhance your life by living with a purpose. You set a higher standard for yourself and are more picky about who you let into your life. Because of the relationships and interactions you maintain, you attract people. You weed out people who don't fit with your goal and keep the ones who do. When you know why you are doing something, it changes how you do it. We refer to this as the power of meaning. As you do your job, work becomes more than a means to an end. It becomes a means to express yourself and contribute to something greater than yourself. 
This way of doing things fits very well with the stoic idea of finding meaning in one's tasks. Whether it's a job, a hobby, or a project you're truly passionate about is different when it's linked to an important goal. You're not just doing things, you're carrying out a job, as Marcus Aurelius said. He often told himself to treat every deed as if it were the last. It's important to remember that purposeful action involves more than just completing tasks. The beauty of living with a purpose lies in putting your all into every moment. It makes decisions easier. You don't have to think about whether choice is right or wrong because you compare what you do to what you want to achieve. If a choice gets you closer to your goal, you should go with it. If it takes you farther away, you should not. According to your goal, it's not that this kind of clarity is freeing because it gets rid of a lot of things. Stoics believe that doubt and hesitation can make it challenging to think clearly. This kind of resolve calls for a life of action based on good sense and virtue. A purpose-driven life also inspires others, preventing stagnation and fear. When people see someone dedicated to a worthwhile path, it hits them more deeply. They question their lives and whether they're pursuing what matters. Your determination to live a meaningful life can be a powerful model for others to follow. Even though the world is crazy, it is possible to live with purpose and be happy. This fits with the stoic idea of leading by example and showing others how to be good. Marcus Aurelius said, If you want to inspire others, don't waste any more time arguing. What should a good man be? This trip's core is the realization that others don't choose your worth by what other people think about your social standing or how your relationships turn out. It comes from the idea that your traits are what make you valuable. Epictetus famously said, Your life should be based on your principles. First figure out who you are, then dress like that. To attract people, the stoic way is to know yourself and work on your inner traits. There's no need to try to impress anyone when you let your deeds speak for themselves. It's not about showing off to anyone. It's about being the kind of beautiful person you truly are. You can focus on wisdom, bravery, self-discipline and justice when by working on these traits you build a strong base that other people can feel. Being calm and confident comes from knowing yourself and your values. This doesn't mean you'll never have doubts or self-doubt. Everyone does. The stoic route, on the other hand, tells you to deal with those times with strength. Marcus Aurelius often thought about how he took problems as chances to get better, on how difficulties were bound to come up and didn't see them as problems. But the way you approach desire is the same as the chances you have to practice virtue. Instead of viewing each interaction as a chance for rejection or approval, you view it as an opportunity. I see it as an opportunity to be honest and brave, regardless of the circumstances. The Stoics also emphasize the importance of self-care, which is a crucial aspect of attraction. When you make your own life full and important, you don't need other people to fill a void or complete you. Being happy doesn't depend on whether someone likes you back, backs up your texts, or gives you approval in this way, giving you mental freedom. It's very beautiful because it demonstrates your confidence in yourself. Seneca said that a person is poor not because he or she has too little, but because he or she wants more. You give off an air of completeness when you learn to be content with who you are and where you are in life, that other people find compelling. Living with purpose also means picking and choosing who you let into your life, and who you let into your life. The Stoics believed that you should hang out with people who, as you set high standards, you should focus on improving yourself and avoiding individuals who will disappoint you. It shows the people you're trying to get close to that you respect yourself and your time. This doesn't mean excluding people or being too harsh. It means putting yourself around people who share your goals and want to see you grow. As you stay on this road, 
you'll notice that your connections get stronger. The attraction you experience transforms into something more profound. You're no longer merely observing. It's a connection you want, the right kind of connection that fits with the life you're making. The Stoic way also tells you to think about the things you can change, has changed the way a lot of people date and get together. Do you question whether someone is interested in your opinion? You can't change how things will turn out, but you can change what you do and how you react. By using your mind, you liberate yourself from the stress of trying to control every outcome. Stop worrying about people's opinions and focus on being your best. This change in focus helps you stay calm and grounded, which in turn enhances your appearance by making you appear more stable and in control. Who can handle the unknowns of life better than grace? Who adopts a stoic attitude? That also means accepting the fact that not everyone will like you. Instead of being liked by everyone, be real when you follow the rules. Because of your values, you automatically draw in beneficial people and push away undesirable ones. The Stoics emphasize being yourself and sticking to your beliefs because of other people. If someone isn't interested in who you really are and they don't fit, that doesn't say anything bad about your worth. Thinking this way frees you from the need to impress others or alter who you are in order to win their approval. You feel positive about yourself and let the right people come into your life. If you enjoyed today's thoughts, feel free to continue with Way of Wisdom. The video that appears on your screen is the next step you need to take to become more stoic, so don't miss it. Keep in mind that your growth is just beginning. Stay strong, be smart and keep trying to be your best self.